Hi everybody, this is me, Dalia Amin, the Egyptian tour guide and archaeologist. Today, I will take you on a short trip in the Egyptian museum to see one of the masterpieces there, which is well known for all of us as a tour guides when we take the tourists in a tour to the Egyptian museum. When we just enter the entrance gate or the second entrance gate of the Egyptian museum, when we take the right hand side way, we can see there the mummy table and just beside is the magnificent coffin of Putuzirus. Putuzirus was a high priest of God Betah and somewhere at Tun al Jabal, Ashmunin city, which is belongs to Almenia Governorate, the 15th Governorate of the ancient Egyptian Aber Governorates or Aber Egypt Governorates. This coffin with the tomb itself was discovered in 1919-1920 by Gustave Lefebvre. It dates back to the reign of Ptolemy I, you can say by the end of the 4th century AD, or sorry, BC, around 310-305 BC. The coffin is made out of blackened pine. The blackened pine was extracting from the petrified forests here in Egypt. Yes, we had petrified forests. This is not strange. We can find it in two places here in Egypt, extracting it from the fifth settlement, you can say al tagamma al khamis in Arabic, and also we can say it from the, or we can get it from the petrified fortress or forests in Wadi Digla, nearby Wadi Digla club just behind in Al Maadi city. The coffin of Putuzirus, who was a high priest of God Tuhut, the god of the wisdom and knowledge, at Tuna al Gabal. Tuna al Gabal itself, its name in a hieroglyphic is Tahinit. Tahinit means in a hieroglyphic the pool or the inundation or the flood. We don't know what is the reason for that, but maybe because it was located nearby the river Nile, so it has a relationship with its inundation. This man was established his tomb for himself, firstly, and later his son was buried beside him, and after that his brother as well. And later, later, it was considered to be like a cemetery because all of his family and some other people were buried there. The important of the his tomb was that it was a unique tomb because it representing a mixture between the ancient Egyptian art, the Persian art, the Greek and Roman art. So when you go inside his tomb, you can see that there is like a catalog for all or for the three or the four eras. Ancient Egyptian scenes, Persian scenes, Greek and Roman scenes, even his tomb itself is taking the same shape of the ancient Egyptian temples with a facade and pylon and pillars and all of that. I will show you a picture of it. The importance also of this, of this uh, uh, coffin that it's still kept in a very good condition. When it was discovered, it was moved from Egypt to the United States. And the mummy of Potosiris was sold by or to someone his name is James Henry. That was around 1894-1895. So this is the story of the mummy itself, not the coffin. So when it was priested at the Oriental Institution Museum in or in the Oriental Institute Museum in USA, the mummy was done. What we call it, a radiology scanner, radiology scanner, in 1989 in Chicago Hospital. Then they discovered that it was for a man and his age and all of that. The coffin from outside is decorated by some perfect hieroglyphic inscriptions and colored. We call it the glass paste, the colored the glass paste, and five hieroglyphic inscriptions. And these five hieroglyphic inscriptions is telling us about his name, his titles, and his position during that time. And also it has some prayers for Goddess Hathor and Goddess Isis as well. 
Maybe you're gonna ask me, where is his name? His name is just right here. You can see it. We can make like a little mark around. That's his name. Okay. So, his name was recorded in the hieroglyphic inscriptions. And as you see, it's reflecting like a piece of art and a piece of magnificent work. Above here, we can see some stars. This stars is the stars of the heaven. And this stars is gonna protect him or light his life or light his uh, tomb on the afterlife. Something else I would like to explain to you or to show you. This is here how his tomb looks like. It was like a temple with a facade and a screen wall with pillars or with the Greek or Egyptian, ancient Egyptian pillars and the Greek pillars. So it's like a nice combination between the ancient Egyptian art, Persian art, Greek and Roman art. This is, is like a little idea about the coffin of Potosiris because all of us, when we go inside the Egyptian museum, we can see it. Something else I would like to explain to you, which is Serena. Maybe that's your first time to see this image or to know something about Serena. The Serena is something like the idea of the Sphinx in Egypt. And all of us can understand very well what is the meaning of the Sphinx. The Sphinx is a body of line and a head of a human beings. Body of line is the significance of the power, strength, and the head of the human beings is the significance of the intelligence and the wisdom. But here, the maid or the Greeks had different belief, had different things. Like what? Serena, it was like a body of a bird, as you see in front of you, with a feather and legs of birds and all of that. And the upper part is a beautiful or a part or a body of a beautiful lady. So what's its function? or where we found this statue here in Egypt. This statue or the Serena itself were existing in two places, mainly two places here in Egypt, Alexandria and Cyrenaikos at Minya el Bahnasa. The uh, statue in front of you here is made out of limestone, limestone. The idea is combination between the human and the animal existed in ancient Egypt, as we just mentioned, as a goddess of the tombs. Serena itself was not a god, but was only the guard of the cemetery. They said that when anyone tried to make any noisy or any bad things inside the cemetery beside the tombs of the deceased, she was or it was screaming with a high voice, so it makes them like dust. That's why it had a great importance for the Greeks as a protector of the cemetery or the guard of the tombs. As you see, the lady is very beautiful. It has a very long neck and it's wearing like a necklace around. The face is rounded with the Greek feature and her hair, we call it in Greek, she makes like a, a melon style with a big... Uh, bomb behind and she's supposed to be wearing earrings but one of it is not existing anymore the idea of fixing the arms and the legs in, in on the during the greek time was different from the ancient one the ancient statues were made out of one block of stone but and sometimes was supported by pillars from behind but the issue here is different that it was, or it's supposed to have two arms, and those two arms are supposed to be raised up, and they were fixing to the body or attached to a body by like an internal pen. And that was lost, or maybe both of the two arms were broken because they were weak. They were not attaching to the body because attaching the uh, arm is the legs, the neck to a pillar or to the body itself, it makes like a natural support for it. But that's why, because it was not attaching to the body, that's why it was broken. But the statue is still in a good condition and in a good form. And this is just giving like a new idea of the guards and the uh, protectors of the cemetery in the Greek time. 
Also on her face, you can see like a very calm and quiet impression as a beautiful lady with a very small lips and rounded eyes with a very curvy eye coral and little forehead. This is, you can explain it when you are just in front of the statue on the Egyptian museum. Best of luck, wish that you understand something in you in our uh, different stuff of the ancient Egyptian artifacts, which is the Greek and Roman stuff. Um, greeting from me, Dalia Amin. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share to receive all of the new videos from me. Thank you so much and goodbye.